<laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, you're you're able to live to tell about it, so you must have a pretty strong chin, an ability to take punches. Yeah, I think my you know what I think one of the reasons is my neck. <clears throat> my neck is pretty thick, and it wasn't always like this. And one of the reasons why it's thick is because I grapple. I'm pretty, you know, right. and 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 you know, for wrestling. Oh, okay, so. In wrestling, we do a lot of uh, uh, exercises for the neck, right? Yeah, so I always try to start the wrestling practice with neck bridges. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, neck bridges, and and there's a reason why, like, um, I, I I I I do some of it, but not not all of it, and because okay. now I, I I learned that um, there was this uh, kinesiologist at one point that uh, that was ta- I was talking to, and he, he's a teacher, a trainer, also. And it was explaining to me that like the spine, right? Like the base of your spine, <clears throat> at the base of it, uh, where your sacrum is, uh, that means you're like, you know, like your, your hips a little bit lower there, like in the back there. So it's thick, really thick. And as you move up, it gets smaller and smaller. And the smallest point is your neck, is where your, um, is where your, your skull attaches to your, <laughs> to your spine. Right. So right. he's saying that neck bridges are actually like horrible for uh, uh, like, yes, it works in the sense that it gets your neck bigger and stronger and all that. But I mean, there's, you know, maybe uh, there's repercussions to that late, later on, because I think that a lot of wrestlers probably have neck issues, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know for sure. Uh, a lot of wrestlers hurt their neck. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, I wouldn't say it's uh, any more though than MMA or, or pure striking sports. I think there's just as many neck injuries in those sports as in wrestling, you know? Um, the thing about the neck bridge is it's also not just about building. I mean, obviously your neck gets a lot stronger, but it's also when you go on your back in wrestling, your shoulder blades, if your shoulder blades are touching for an instant, you're pinned. So the only way to really stay out, out of a pin if you're on your back is to, to get up in that back neck bridge. So that's, that's a big reason why we practice that too. So that if you get taken down, put on your back, you hit the back neck bridge and you get out. You know, so, okay. uh, so there's a big, uh, those exercises we do, that goes beyond just uh, building the strength of the neck. It's also, it's very useful in combat to, to, know, to be mobile in that position, to be mobile from a neck bridge. Uh, and to be honest, I'm 40 now and I don't do neck bridges. When I was younger, I would do them all the time. And I would rotate around like you see the younger guys doing now. Mm-hmm. Like I would jump, I'd jump over, to try to jump back. I knew it was really good at doing the jump back. Uh, although some of our younger guys are doing it really well. Uh, but now as I'm older, I take it easy on the neck bridge for that reason. You're right. It, uh, it can't put a lot of strain on the neck and on the spine. Right. So I think uh, that's that's a big part about wrestling is that it's a young man's game. And as you get older, you can still participate in it. But be smart about it. You know, learn, uh, learn what to do, what not. I mean, 40 year olds, I would say, hey, don't don't focus on doing the neck bridge. Do basic neck bridge. Uh, maybe maybe just do some neck exercises where you're you're supporting your body better. No, but don't try to do the neck bridges like you see the younger guys doing because they're doing it more for functionality in, in their big tournaments and their big uh, and their big fights. Okay, yeah, you know I, I like what you said regarding that. That uh, you know, like yeah, of course uh, the neck's gonna take a beating, you know, in wrestling. But I mean that goes for pretty much any combat sport, right? <laughs> right. right like, exactly. e- any contact sport, even even like American football. Yeah, you're gonna like get. I would say football and hockey are way more, de- like there's probably way more neck injuries in football and hockey than there are in wrestling. Mm. Just because in those sports, you're getting hit when you're not expecting it. And you're getting hit by people who are trained to hit you as hard as they possibly can, right? With their bodies, you know, whereas wrestling, there's, you know, it's not about hitting as hard as you can with the body. It's about taking the person down. Uh, it's about outmaneuvering them, that sort of thing. And you see the person, you're, you're face-to-face with your, with your one opponent the whole time so a lot of people would think wrestling would be the most dangerous for the neck but i would say football and hockey are way more dangerous okay that, you know that that actually like uh makes me feel a lot better you know because i was i was thinking to myself man you know it's dangerous for the neck you know all that neck bridging and stuff like that i just won't do the neck bridges but i'll just do basic exercises for my neck but understanding like the functionality of why we're doing it you know we're not just doing it just to strengthen our necks we're doing it so that because you need to be able to bridge like that to get out of bad positions uh, but also, tactic. yeah, yeah. To, to what survival? It's a, it's a survival tactic. 
Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. If yeah, you end up on your back, you know you got to hit your bridge because that's it. Some referees call the pin right away. It's very, it can be very subjective. Wrestling. Some referees call the pins faster than the blink of an eye. All right, those are the guys who always call jerks. Some referees uh, don't call it right away. They look for it to be perfect, and a lot of times they miss the pin. You never know what the referee might do to you. What the re- what the referee is going to be, how he's going to be acting that day, how fast he's going to call it. You can't leave it to a chance, right? Just like Dana White when he says, never leave it in the hands of the judges. It's the same thing in wrestling. Never leave it in the hands of the referee. Exactly. Oh, the same. okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. But uh, um, yeah, yeah. So that, that pretty much reassures me uh, for, for some weird reason. I don't know why. You know, I do so, so many, so much like I, I train so much and I got like a, a laundry list of injuries already. And, and here I am worried about like my neck and all. Um, yeah, hey, well, you're, you're good to be safe. Yeah. Cost, being cautious at 43, especially is a, is a great idea. Yeah. But, it, but it makes yeah. sense. Like all the other stuff that I'm doing, um, uh, you know, any other like martial art, like combat, um, uh, you know, um, sport, like, like the, the, the risk of neck injury is there also. So it's like, exactly. if you're going to be, you know, doing any kind of contact combat sport, it's inevitable. Like you're, you, you're going to get, you know, it's going to happen where your neck's going to be affected in one way or another, you know? So yeah. at least, but you know, like you said, like in wrestling, it's one-on-one. It's not like you just have one guy to deal with where if, when you're playing American football or hockey or whatever, like it's, it's like, you don't know where it could come from. Right. Exactly. And uh, you know, the neck bridge, think about it. It's only going to make your neck stronger for wrestling or for any of the sports that you're doing. And also, Mm -hmm. as long as you don't push your limits too hard with the neck bridge, you know what you're capable of and you stick within that realm, you shouldn't have any injuries, right? You go at your own speed. No one's Mm -hmm. telling you you have to to go up and down faster with the neck bridge. You go at your own speed, what you're comfortable with, and and you'll feel the pain coming before uh, it gets too far. So it's something you can really control, right? Whereas being in hockey and going for the the puck in the corner and having a 250-pound guy come slamming into you, from behind you don't even see it coming that's something you can't control and your neck's going to be way worse off but if you were doing neck bridges you'd probably be better prepared for that hit ah there you go neck neck bridges for hockey (laughs) (laughs) why not right yeah Um, yeah because you know if you have a strong neck it actually helps you to um uh you're you're harder to knock out and you're harder to i think get concussed you know and and i've gotten big hits like you know, doing, doing other martial arts. Um, and I'm still here and I, I never got knocked out. You know, I got rocked, but like my neck, uh, I credit it to my neck, you know? <laughs> <laughs>